Her name is Maureen Francisco. And she says, you know what? If you really want to get ahead, no matter what it is, in life, in romance, in business, it takes moxie. And that's the name of the book. In fact, subtitled, it takes moxie off the boat or out of school to making your way in America. Maureen, listen, welcome to the Morning Scramble. My first question, though, has to do with the American dream, because you concentrate on that so much. And you were five before you had to begin believing that you were part of it. Yes. So my family came here from the Philippines when I was five years old, and I could barely speak the language. And of course, like most immigrants, we come here for better opportunities. And I knew right away that we came from humble beginnings. When I was living in the Philippines, I didn't know any better because that's what you're used to. That's and your beginnings were pretty humble, weren't they? Very humble. If you watch the movie Slumdog Millionaire, <laughs> it was that humble. Wow. So when you're talking about the American dream, though, um, is it more difficult for non-Americans to achieve that dream than native-born Americans? So for someone who is not born in this country, there's a lot of obstacles that we're facing, and one of them is speaking the language. Um, when I came here, I could barely speak a word of English. And what happened in your life? it was really difficult for me to express myself. So while going to school, if you can't express yourself with your peers, so sometimes they would make fun of you. So what I would do when I went home from school, I would turn on the news and watch the TV news reporter and anchor speak, and I would practice saying those very same words out loud. And I find it really ironic that when I was in a pageant, I was representing Federal Way, I was Miss Federal Way, that a reporter was interviewing me, and I was thinking, wow, what a fun job. I could totally see myself be a storyteller, and right after college, I spent five years reporting and anchoring all over the country, and I just look back and I go, it's so interesting how this little girl once upon a time could barely express herself, and here she is doing that for a living. Uh, you know, it's, it's particularly interesting to me, because be, beginning now and every single morning that you pick up the paper or you check out television news or the Internet, it's almost always a story about immigration somewhere near the top. And you're a perfect example of somebody who came to this country uh, under difficult circumstances, and you are living the American dream right now. But is that applicable to everybody, whether you're from the Philippines or Mexico or Ghana? It is. What's wonderful about this country, we have the choice for the pursuit of happiness. It's a choice. And with our conditions, I remember with my family's conditions, we were not happy in the Philippines. So moving here, we saw the opportunities. And not only do I share my stories, but I also share stories from other successful um, immigrants all over the country. For example, Dr. Connie Mariano, oh. who is a local person well, here. Well, and a regular guest on this program who's just tired of being asked about <laughs> fat guys from New Jersey. Yes, with the Governor Christie story. Well, I had lunch with her a couple of years ago, and she and I had the same editor. And I remember her asking me, so who is writing the foreword of your book? She knew that in order to have a publisher pick up that book, you need somebody with a big name. And she um, asked me, do you have anybody? And I said, no, I don't have anybody writing the foreword of my book. And she said, I will write the foreword of your book. So she opened the opportunities for me. She opened the doors for me. And uh, she talks about her story where she is an immigrant, a woman, and here she is facing obstacles, being in the military. And when she was at the White House, people often had mistaken her for being the nurse, not the doctor. She was the president's physician, for crying out loud, and now a very successful concierge physician here in the Valley of the Sun. But I want to know about the other job seekers, not the ones with MD, not the ones with the framed diploma that says, I'm a medical doctor or I'm an attorney. So you come here and you learn the language, but then you have to get a job. Yes, so my grandmother came here in her 50s. 
um, while most people were thinking about retiring, she was thinking about staying healthy so she can provide for her nine children and 40 some grandchildren. Excuse me, how many? 40. 40 some grandchildren. Those and now Filipinos. she has 60. Yes. Those Filipinos for crying out loud. Yes. But and all right, so what, what did she do? Well, she, um, as soon as she got her working permit, she started to work at a hotel laundry department. Now, mind you, it was not a glamorous job at all, but she knew she had responsibilities. And once again, um, it was this country that provided her the opportunity of getting a paycheck with benefits, and she was able to work here and retire, and now she goes back and forth from the Philippines to this country. And here was someone who was not college educated. She barely spoke the language, but uh, she was willing to work hard to achieve her American dream, and that was to support her family. What are the priorities that you would offer to job seekers right now? whether they're from someplace else or here. Just don't feel entitled at all. Throw away the entitlement because you have to earn everything. Like for me being an immigrant, I have earned every single thing that I've ever done. Nothing was ever handed to me. Have a positive attitude. How about a positive attitude uh, that would be on uh, page 76 of It Takes Moxie? Where do we get the book? Um, go to Amazon.com or check out my website, MaureenFrancisco.com. Uh, this, is, this is a young woman who's got an extraordinary personal story. Because she was the only first grader in her elementary school who was so totally enthralled with American news that she learned to say this phrase first. We'll be back in a moment right after this.